Wow, what some senators just said about another stimulus package, and a bill that was just voted on in the Senate, which failed, and some other important headlines that just hit the wire that you certainly want to know about. I have all the details for you right here in this video, so let's get right into it. All right, so once again, as always, we have a lot to talk about right here in this video, so let's buzz our way through these one at a time. First off, yesterday, the United States posted another 208,000 new COVID cases. Here's what's interesting about that. Just about a month or so ago, we were posting about 30 to 50,000 new cases a day for COVID cases. However, here we are as of yesterday, 208,000 new cases. Now, don't get me wrong. This is certainly well below the highs that we were seeing earlier this year. There were about 1.3 million cases a day. However, the trend is certainly moving its way back up, just like we've been reading about and talking about over the last couple weeks here. So, wanted to bring this to your attention just because this is something that we need to keep our eyes on going forward. Now, of course, the doctors and the experts, the analysts, people that are watching this stuff closely are anticipating another spike of COVID cases sometime this summer and, of course, into the fall and possibly even early winter. In fact, they're now calling it Wave 6. Yeah, unbelievable, right? Wave six. I mean, seriously, how many waves are there going to be? But anyway, that's what they're saying as of right now. So I'll keep you posted as we do get more details. One more side note as well. I did talk about this the other day, but just in case you're interested, you can now once again order more, uh, more free COVID tests on the government website, covidtests.gov. You can order twice as many as previously that you could order back in January and March. You can now order up to eight at one given time. So again, covidtests.gov if you're interested in ordering some free COVID tests from the government. All right, next. This morning, the initial jobless claim number was released again. This is a number that comes out every Thursday morning, and I like to keep you posted on this again because it gives us a glimpse into the job market and what is actually going on out there right now with unemployment and of course, employment. So here's what happened. It came in this morning at 218,000 new people applied for unemployment benefits last week. Now again, why do we care? Well, we care because this is the highest number that we've seen since January. Again, not a good trend. The trend is going up in this case. In other words, more people being laid off, out of work, things like this. Therefore, it's starting to show that some of the effects of this inflation and things that are going on right now are starting to hit the employment sector. Not necessarily a good thing. Again, another metric that we need to watch closely going forward. And of course, I'll keep you posted as we do get more details. Next, I want to throw this one out there as well. Now, over the last maybe two months or so, I've been talking about global food shortages. Now, I think this is a very important one because... This is very, very important to understand because here's the thing. There's been a lot of talk here going forward, especially with the glo uh, global conflict and global situation that's going on right now. Um, the two countries, Russia and Ukraine, export a massive percentage of the global uh, grain supply, wheat, barley, soybeans, corn, things like this. Well, as a result of that and everything going on right now, unfortunately, they're not able to produce and or export all of this grain that the world needs. So they've been talking a lot about uh, global food shortages. Well, here's the thing. It was just released today that Ukraine is exporting 60% less grain right now than what they were a year ago. So that's really going to impact the global food supply, right? Again, something else we got to watch closely because there's a lot going on. And ultimately, this is something that it's probably going to take a long time to work its way through the system, but it's also going to take a very long time to get back up and running once we get the necessary amount of grain that we need. But remember too, you can't just flip a switch and have a bunch of grain. It takes a very long time to plant the fields, wait for it to grow, um, you know, harvest the crop, things like this. It just takes a long time. You can't just flip a switch one day and ramp up production. It doesn't work that way, right? Not with grains anyway. Some things it does, but not with uh, crops. No, it doesn't work that way. Anyway, I do have a lot more details for you right here in this video, but really fast. If you're new here or if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe down below. I'm doing anything I possibly can every single day to make sure that you're staying updated with everything going on right now as your one and only daily advocate. I truly want to help you out in any way that I can, making sure that you're getting all the best updates, the most uh, honest, accurate, reliable, and transparent information every single day that I find for you during all this research. I want to make sure that you know about this stuff because it is going to impact us in some way, shape, or form 
platform. And anytime that money, benefits, checks, programs, or anything else comes out that we can take advantage of, of course, I want to be right here for you, laying it all out, making sure that you know about it so that you can grab what you have due coming to you as far as your piece of the pie. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And let's get into the rest of these updates. All right. So as we discussed earlier today in that last video, um, the Senate did vote on and passed the $40 billion Ukraine relief bill. Great. However, this afternoon now, they also did vote once again to actually move forward on that $48 billion business package. Remember that one? I talked about that earlier as well. $48 billion package to send it out to entertainment, uh, venues, gyms, minor league sports teams, things like this that have been negatively impacted as a result of COVID. Well, as I mentioned in the video earlier, a lot of lawmakers were coming out saying, I don't think so. We're, we're not going to send another $48 billion to businesses um, as a result of COVID. This is not happening. No. Well, anyway, they voted this afternoon and it ultimately failed. It came in the votes uh, 52 to 43. They needed 60 votes. So it failed by eight votes. So the likelihood of this thing actually going through and passing is probably very slim as in it's probably not happening. Okay. So just want to let you know where we stand with that. But the, 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 the argument that some of these lawmakers were saying is if we pump another $48 billion out there into businesses, this is just going to ramp up inflation even more. No, businesses don't need the extra support right now. The American people need the support, not small business, or, or sorry, not um, small businesses, but rather not these entertainment venues, minor league sports teams, gyms, things like this. No, it's not happening. Anyway, so that failed this afternoon and um, it was going to be set up for a, a, a final vote, um, possibly as early as tomorrow. But again, doesn't look like that's going to be happening. So just want to keep you posted on that one as well. Um, any further word on that $28 billion uh, bill that was passed late yesterday evening on the baby formula shortages? I have not seen anything on that lately. Again, as I do get more details on that, I can keep you posted, but it is waiting in the Senate as of right now, as far as last I heard about it and last I read about it. Um, as far as I understand, they did not vote on that one quite yet. However, let me share with you now what a couple senators are now saying about another stimulus package. Yeah, right. This is seriously a thing. Let me tell you the details about this. I've been talking about this for several months now, and finally, the chickens are coming home to roost. Yeah, right? I don't know where that fit into this presentation, but sorry, I just had to throw that out there because, you know, we've been talking about this for a very long time now, and finally we're getting some more data on this. So we've been talking about for a very long time now, Democrats have full control, right? They're controlling the House, the Senate, and of course, the presidency. However, we got the midterm elections coming up a little bit later this year, where possibly the House may flip, the Senate may flip, but again, the presidency we don't, it's going to stay the same for at least a few more years. Again, not saying it's going to change. I just have no clue. I'm just simply saying that's what's going to happen. Or, you know, the, the, the presidency is in place. But at, either way, the midterm elections are coming up and we could see some changes in the House or the Senate. Well, as a result of that, we've also seen and we've been speculating as well as hearing from lawmakers saying, this is our one opportunity. We may be losing uh, the House or a Senate. Therefore, we've got to get another reconciliation bill done, which by the way, Reconciliation bills allow them to get virtually anything that they want done. If they have a wish list, throw it in the reconciliation bill because they can virtually get anything they want in it. Now, of course, there are a few restrictions. There are a few things that they cannot get done through reconciliation, but for the most part, they can do just about anything, right? Um, but anyway, this is exactly the type of bill that they passed a year ago, or let's be fair, it was over a year ago, the American Rescue Plan that was the $1.9 trillion package that contained the $1,400 stimulus checks, just so they were all on the same page and understanding what the reconciliation bill is. It's a pretty powerful strategy that they can use to get legislation through with just a simple vote through the Senate. Anyway, it avoids the filibuster is essentially what it comes down to. Anyway, so here's what happened. Now senators are starting to look at the calendar saying, uh-oh, we've lost track of time. Uh, the midterm elections are coming up here quickly and uh, let's get something done. So let me share with you a couple of things that senators are now saying. Elizabeth Warren was out and said that she is worried they're not going to deliver for the American people. And I'd like to rebuttal with that by saying, yeah, nice observation. Uh, yeah, what have you guys done for the American people in the last year? I think the answer is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. 
Anyway, that's my rebuttal to that one. So, yes, nice observation, Elizabeth Warren. You've done nothing. So please, maybe you should consider doing something to deliver for the American people if you're so worried about it. So, anyway, just my little uh, um, public service announcement <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> anyway, I, I think all of us can uh, probably share a little bit in the frustration here as far as senators, uh, lawmakers, House representatives. They all know what to do right now as far as helping out the low income and the fixed income. Um, so... I think this is a valid concern that Elizabeth Warren has right now, which is she's concerned that they're not going to deliver for the American people. So they've got some time here. Let's see it. Deliver, right? All right, but here's another quote or another statement, I should say. This is not going to be an exact quote, but it'll be very, very close. Um, but anyway, out of Tim Kaine. Tim Kaine, again, another senator. But Tim Kaine went on to say, it would be professional malpractice with a Democratic majority to uh, pass or to, to miss out on a reconciliation opportunity, okay? So exactly what we've been saying here for the last very long time now. Essentially what Tim Kaine is saying is um, it would be professional malpractice. Now, it's not technically professional malpractice, but he's, he's likening this to professional malpractice in the event that uh, Democrats have full control, a Democratic majority, and they are going to leave a reconciliation opportunity on the table. So, yeah, right? In other words, what Tim Kaine is saying is um, we've got the opportunity to use reconciliation. Let's get it done, guys. You know what I mean? So that's essentially what is being said with these remarks right here is we have this opportunity. The window is open for a little bit longer here. Why are we sitting on our hands? And um, why are we not using this opportunity? Because once something comes, if the midterm elections come forward, and if the uh, Democrats do lose control in either the House or the Senate, then guess what? The reconciliation option is off the table. Done. Game over. That's it. Throw them out. Game over. That's it, right? So anyway, that's why they're saying um, we've got this opportunity. They have the opportunity to use reconciliation, but yet are they going to do it? Well, Tim Kaine is essentially saying, um, you know, it's kind of our duty right now to get this kind of this to get this done. So anyway, kind of interesting, right? So now we've had a couple timelines on the table here. Uh, we've seen multiple different timelines. Um, so previously, over the last couple weeks and the last couple months, there's been this timeline of August. However, I just saw two more timelines today, one being Memorial Day. Well, I'm going to tell you this much. It's not happening by Memorial Day. That is only a couple days away. There's just no way. It's not going to happen by then. There's no possible way. However, Joe Manchin has indicated a timeline of September 30th. So um, he did have, have some logic and some reasoning behind that timeline. So that is the new kind of timeline that I'm seeing out there right now is any time between now and August. And again, any time between now and the end of September, when again, the fiscal year starts over for the federal government. Anyway, these are the updates that I have for you as of right now. I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe down below. I'm doing research all day, every single day, trying to find the best information for you, boiling it down into these short videos so that you can stay updated with everything going on right now during this very, very busy time. And I will continue to be here right by your side, advocating for you in any way that I possibly can, helping you out, and just want to make sure that you're staying tuned with everything going on. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. And Go ahead and share this video with your friends, family, social media, and of course, go back and check out any of the other 2,500 videos right here on the channel. Thanks again. I appreciate it. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you again later. In